Hello, and welcome to our channel where we explore the world of Odoo. This time we'll be diving into creating custom view types. If you haven't watched my previous videos in the Using Odoo Web Framework series, I'd recommend starting from the beginning as they lay down the foundational concepts necessary for creating custom view types. Let's break down the essential components required to create custom view types. OWL Odoo uses OWL as its component system. View types are created using one or more OWL components. An OWL component is essentially a JavaScript class that represents part of the user interface. We define OWL components by subclassing the component class. QWeb The QWeb templating engine is used to render the user interface for OWL components. It uses XML tags and directives to control output and the generation process, with additional specific tags and directives unique to QWeb. ORM Service Oda's web framework provides an ORM service, which has a similar API to its Python counterpart. This service is essential to retrieve and store data within the Oda database. Registry The registry key value map stores various items such as parsers, formatters, fields, system tray items, services, actions, among others, including available view types. When creating new view types, they must be registered within this map. In addition to these essential components, Oda's web framework offers numerous tools and features that can help simplify the creation of custom view types. For instance, the layout component can be used to adhere to the standard Oda layout, and the search bar component provides search functionality akin to built-in view types. Before jumping into the code, let's outline what we'll be building in this tutorial. We will create three distinct custom view types. A simple view that displays a hello message. A basic view that shows model details such as model name, record count, and field information. And a view that incorporates several built-in Odoo Web Framework features. The layout component to maintain common layouts, search bar component for search functionality, and use pager hook for pagination. We will also add common buttons for creating and editing records in this third custom view type. Similar to before, we'll be using the cheat web module created in a previous video from my Using Odoo Web Framework series. Now, let's get started. We begin by defining a simple custom view type with an object containing several properties and a single function, props. The most basic types need two properties, type, which denotes the technical name of the view type, and controller, an owl component as the root component of the view. As we progress, more complex view types may include additional properties. All custom view types must have a props method with two parameters, generic props and view. When the view is about to be displayed, Oda calls this function, providing information about the view itself, related model, and other details. In our hello example, we will return generic props with a custom value. And after defining the new view type, we must register it to the registry. When a view type is requested for display, Oda searches the registry for the corresponding type and then displays the associated component, the controller. Custom view controllers require specific props, which can be imported from standard view props and extended using the spread operator. And that's basically it. We've created a new view type. To use the view type, we simply add new view for a model with hello view type and assign it to the action window, as usual. From the hello view type, we can conclude two key aspects when creating a view type. First, view types must have at least two properties, type and controller and one method named props. And the second, view types must be registered. Next, we'll create statistic view type that utilizes information passed from Odoo to the view type. We will define our view with two additional properties, model and render. Since these attributes are being added to the custom view type, they must be returned as part of the props methods result so that the controller can use them. As before, we then register the new view within the registry. In the controller, we use the ORM service and create a new instance of the model. We pass references to the ORM service, data model name, and field information into the model object. 
and we invoke the model's load method inside an on will start hook, ensuring that whenever this view is about to be displayed, it will automatically load corresponding data. The model itself is a JavaScript class with two functions, constructor and load. Since we already have access to field information and data model name from props passed during the controller's initialization of the model object, our primary task here is querying the record count from ORM service and storing this result in a property. The renderer component focuses on rendering the view type. We use the renderer within the controller's template using QWebT component directive with the model as its props. And we've successfully created the second view type. We can use the statistic view type, just as the same as the hello view type. From the statistic view type, we learn to manage the code by moving the code and template which focus on the presentation to subcomponent, the renderer, and the code which deals with the data to another class, the model. For our final custom view type, we'll incorporate some of Oda's built-in functions to simplify creating new view types. We define a new view type with additional properties, arch parser, and search menu type. The arch parser is responsible for parsing the arch field within a view. Its most common use case involves selecting which fields of the model should be displayed or providing options to further customize the view generation. For our Arch Parser implementation, we utilize Odoo's built-in function, the VisitXML function, to parse the XML and pre-process the included fields. We demonstrate the pre-processing by using the built-in ParseFieldNode function and by adding ConserveLineBreak property to the field node based on the field attribute conserve line breaks. Upon parsing, the result is passed to the controller along with the model and the renderer and other information in the generic props. On the controller side, in contrast with the previous two view types, which only use the layout component to show the title and available view types of the current model, we use more features of the layout components. This time we add a button to create new records, a search bar, and a pagination feature. These are all using built-in components and hooks from Oda's web framework. Neat, right? To create a new record, we utilize the create record function, which will open the form view of the corresponding model. This function is provided automatically by the framework as one of the standard view props. And to prevent double clicking, we use this function along with execute button callback function, which will prevent multiple clicks by disabling the button after the first click. For the search bar component, we simply add the search bar component on the template and link it to the use search bar toggler hook. This way the search bar will be hidden if the screen is small. Furthermore, we set that the first time the view is shown, the search bar will receive the focus. For simplicity, we don't implement the group by feature, so we also need to disable the group by by setting the search menu types property of the view type. And that's it for the search feature. Everything else is automatically set by the framework. For the pagination feature, we use the use pager hook. With the use pager hook, we simply need to provide information about the current pagination state, such as the current offset, limit, the total records, and a callback function, which will be called when the pagination state changes. For example, when the user clicks the next page button. Other things are automatically set by the framework. For example, the framework will automatically show the pager component when we use the use pager hook. Moving on to the model, instead of creating an entirely new class, we create a new class inheriting the built-in model class. This way we can simply use the useModel hook and the useState to instantiate the model and make it reactive. In other words, the model will automatically reload when the model properties change, for example, when the pagination state is changed. Remember that the usePager only changes the model state, to make the changes reflected to the user interface, we need to make it reactive using the useState hook. Similar to the previous two view types, the renderer focuses on the presentation. In such, we pass the necessary information as props for the renderer. In this case, information about the model, 
the records, the fields, and since we also want to provide buttons to edit the records, we also pass a callback function to the render. As shown here, we display each record in a card, showing the record ID, the display name field, and the first five fields. If any of the field in that first five fields is marked to conserve line breaks, we use text area element to display the field, otherwise, we use text input. If you're wondering why the first five fields, don't sweat it. It's just to demonstrate additional processing when displaying the view type. And that's it. We've created a new view types which utilize some of the built-in components and functions from Odoo Web Framework. There are two more things to do before using these view types. First is to add these view types to the UI view model and the action window view model on the server side. To do this, we need to modify the view mode field of the action window view model to accommodate the new view types. And similarly, we need to add options to the type field of the UI view model. Also, we need to override the get view info of the UI view model to define the icons for the new view types. The second is to validate the view types arch field. There are three ways where we can validate the arch field value. First is by using relax ng schema. The second is to add validation method on the UI view model, or the third option is to use both. The built-in Odoo view types use the third option. For our view types, we use the relax ng schemas. To do this, we need to create a function to perform the validation and register it with validate decorator from module view validation. Let's summarize what we've learned today. View types must have at least two properties, type and controller, and one method named props. View types must be registered on both the client side and the server side. View types controller is an owl component. We can treat it just as the same with other owl components. Oda framework provides built-in components and tools which we can use to create new view types effectively. We can validate the arch field of the view type using relax ng schemas and by adding validation method on the UI view model. And that's it for now. We'll explore more about Odoo Web Framework in my next video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on my experiments and tutorials.